Hi, welcome to an Arduino tutorial from Robojax. My name is Ahmad Shamshiri. I'm presenting this tutorial from Canada. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use the millis or millisecond in Arduino programming. Let's get started with this. So what is millis and why we have to use it? First, millis is an internal function from Arduino that calculates the time in milliseconds from the starting point when Arduino program runs. As soon as you power up the Arduino, the milliseconds will start with zero and it goes up in milliseconds. For one second, you will read 1,000 and for five seconds, you will read 5,000 and so forth. But it can be accessed throughout the code at any point. For example, you can record a start of a point and then st stop of the point. At any moment, for example, let's say somebody press a push button or temperature increases or something is detected, you can say, I'm counting from this point until some other event happens or until you want it. For example, a push button is pressed and in five seconds you want to do something. From the time the push button is pressed, you can save the millis in a variable and then you can check it continuously and then you see when it is 5,000 milliseconds or 5 seconds, then you can take an action. Many times people will need to use delay, uh, the function delay with 5,000 milliseconds, it will be 5 seconds delay. But the problem with the delay is that it will halt all program, everything that you have, everything will be waited until the delay passes, then they will continue. But with millis, it will not interfere with any other features that you have and you can calculate the time and the rest of the program or components that are connected to Arduino, they all function normally. Now let me show you practically on Arduino. And here I've defined the serial monitor with 9600 baht so it can display the value on the screen for me and this is just a text and I'm waiting for two seconds here using the delay. To use millis, we type millis M-I-L-L-I-S and open and close parenthesis. This means it's a function with an Arduino. But this is just a value at the moment that Arduino starts and it will increment every millisecond. Now let me print it for you first. I've written this code like this using serial print ln. Print ln means new line, so it will print the millis value and will create a new line. The speed of uh, how fast this is printed it now depends on serial monitor because it has to read the value from Arduino and bring it back on the screen. For that reason, this will delay it, but we will see some value. I, and I did not put any delay here, so you will con constantly see the values. And I'm going to stop it so we can review it. I'm opening the serial monitor from here, but you can click on Tools, Serial Monitor, or you can use the Control Shift and M to open it. This is two seconds, and that's it. It will uh, start automatically. Let me stop it, and here, as you can see, the scroll bar is going crazy. It's continuously printing. Let's see here. Automatically, it was two seconds here, remember? I put a two seconds delay, the program starts running, and after two seconds it prints 1999 because zero is also millisecond. The first millisecond is zero and then one and two. And after that it prints it very quickly because the serial monitor prints it uh, very fast. And slowly you see here eight, and this has been printed a little late, four milliseconds late, late, and then from four, and this is a longer and from here to here, six milliseconds. So, so you got the idea that this is the time from the beginning. Now it's 52 seconds, and it continuously will print. If I leave the scroll on, you will see that it's 60 seconds, one minute. So continuously it prints the value. You got the idea. The value for the millis is unsigned long. That's very important because if you try to compare it with an integer, you will get error according to the Arduino website. So I'm defining an event. Let's say you want to take some action after five seconds. We are defining it as a 
type long and we put unsigned which means it doesn't have negative or positive so it has no sign unsigned long event this is our variable and the value for that is 5000 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds and here we check from the start it as zero and it increases until it, it reaches equal or greater than event if when it is five bigger than 5000 this will be printed and let me open and as you can see these are millisecond one second two and as you can see it shows event occurred i'm disconnecting it from usb and let's see at 5000 4,995 and hit this occurred when it was 5,000 and it, as you can see next is 5,016 and forever it will be. So this is one way that you can remember and the beauty of this one is that you can do any other tasks that are within the loop they will continuously operate and this will not interfere with them and yet you can detect the time. If we do not use the millis then uh, our option would be to have delay. For example, you want to take some action, you can say uh, delay 5000 and then serial print like this. And you don't have this one. This will also will be printed only when 5000 millisecond passes. But the problem for this is until this time passes, the program will stop here and stuck here all the code, whatever action that you have below this in this area will not be executed. So delay is not a good option if you're uh, working with time and there are other tasks involved. If you don't have anything else to do and the whole code is waiting for this, then it will be very simple and it will be reasonable to use delay. But in many applications, this will not work and it will be problematic. So we will use Millis. This was one example. And here I've connected this push button, which has two pins like this. The left uh, pin is connected to the ground of Arduino. Here we have a ground. And the right pin is connected to pin two. And here is an example for the push button. First, I've defined using pin mode, pin two as an input. And I also put underscore pull up. This will eliminate usage of a resistor. I have separate video explaining that. The link will be provided below the video. And here, this pen is now ready without a resistor. It accepts when you push the push button, it will uh, be detected. And now the rest of the code is the same. I have added this line, digital read to. So this is reading pen two's status, either pressed or not pressed. Remember this input pull up means it is pulling up the pen two this pin 2 with a resistor to positive so it constantly will have uh, 5 volts from this pin 2 to the Arduino so Arduino is reading always high and we read it and we store the value of whatever is the result into the PB or push button as an integer so if it is high it will be 1 if it is low it will be 0 when the push button is pressed it will be 0 now we check if PB is low, low means zero, this two equal means compare this with this. So we are comparing it. If it is true, which means if push button is equal low, then take the action, whatever is between these two parentheses, so this action will take place. This is exactly the same as before, but here this will occur only if push button is pressed. What it means is, if at the beginning somebody pushes the button, it will not take action until five second passes. After five second, this event that we have defined as before, five second is here at the beginning. Until five second is passed, then we will see this action. Otherwise, this push button, if it is not pressed, the code will not come to execute this. Now, let me run the code. I will just leave it. You see, this is one second, two second, three seconds. Now, if I push the push button, you will see the action after f seven. Now, if I close the serial monitor, monitor and reopen it again, it will reset the time. 
so I'm pushing the push button I see two seconds three seconds nothing four and suddenly you see take action when I remove my hand it stops so let me stop it or maybe disconnect Arduino so the scrolling stops automatically so pay attention here this is 900 millisecond one second and as we can see we are at two seconds here three seconds and here 4,995 uh, 4, milliseconds so it's almost five seconds when it's five seconds it says take action action takes place when push button is pressed and the time is more than five seconds and whatever other task that you have will continuously will be executed it will not be interrupted In this example, we are checking the status of a push button if it has been pressed twice or more. Once it is uh, pushed for the first time, we record the time uh, in the button pushed variable and then continuously monitor to see if it has been pushed after five seconds. For example, at two, three seconds, four seconds, if it is pressed, doesn't matter, 4.9 seconds, doesn't matter. As soon as it is pressed after five seconds or longer, then we can take an action. Of course, you can make it more complicated, but this is just simple task. So we will check the status of push button uh, if it has been pressed twice or more. And here is a third example. What we do is in this one that we push the button and we make sure the second push occurs after five seconds. When it is after five seconds, then we take some action. So now at this case, doesn't matter when, maybe after one hour somebody pushes the first and then the second. This push can be signal from a sensor from something. I just made this simple, but you can do other tasks. So first we have defined a variable called button push. This is the time when the push button is pressed. What we do is we set it at zero initially and then after that, as soon as program starts, it will never be zero. So this is just for our reference. I will show you. Then the rest is the same and here after this line what we check is we check if push button is equal low which means if push button is pressed and and these two ampersand means and this and this must be true both of them so we check if push button with if if button push is equal zero which means it's the if it is at the initial state then we uh, save the current millis millisecond at a button pushed variable so now zero will be replaced with this and then we say first push at this time and we print the time that we stored and that said so before if I go for the second section remember that when the loop continues next time if but the button is pressed and if the button is not equal zero this this will not be executed so this will run only once when we save the uh, push button value then we check here uh, the code will check if push button is pressed still and button pushed is bigger than zero which means it has some value then we check here uh, we have a variable called difference what we do is we get the current millisecond which is always greater because when the time passes it increases subtract uh, subtract the button pushed value from it and we have a difference between the time that was pushed and the current time and we check if the difference is greater or equal the event event is the value that we have here is five seconds then we take um, some action which we print okay after five seconds this has been pressed here this uh, in this case I'm not um, checking if it has been pressed after six seconds seven seconds but for us, it's important that it has to be pressed uh, after five seconds at any time. Of course, you can make it uh, very precise. For example, it can, if it is pressed between five to seven seconds, some action should take place. But for simplicity, I'm just saying if it is pressed after five seconds, this action will take place. And you can put whatever code you want in this uh, area. Let me upload the code. I'm opening the serial monitor. As you can see, the time is running. Absolutely no difference when I press it. It will be very quick that you saw that it says 
button pushed. If I press it, nothing happens. You see now, if it was, if it was five seconds, let me disconnect Arduino so the screen stops. Let's go and check the time when I pressed it first. These are the millisecond, 1.6 seconds. So first push at 5,019 milliseconds, 5 seconds and 19 milliseconds. So this was when I pushed it. So if you take 5, 5 plus 5, it should be 10,019. After 10,019, it should have effect. Otherwise, a push button should not have any effect. And I pressed it so many times. So this is 7, 8,000, 9,000. You see 10,000 and something. I've not pressed it. At 10,168 milliseconds, I pressed it and it shows after five seconds of the first push. And as long as I kept the button pushed, you will see these values and after that I release it. That's it, I hope you've learned this and uh, I have a lot of other I have videos that I've used this in many uh, instances. The link will be provided, for example, I have a timer and here in this video, RoboJax Arduino Relay Timer version one. I have used it to control uh, an, uh, an AC bulb or something with a relay. And here is the code, maximum time, minimum time. And let me see, you see here, millis, remember time, I've used it. So it runs and you can press the push button at any time to reset it or start the relay. The link will be provided for this. I'd like to sincerely thank the following people who have supported me via Patreon.